columnist E. Jean Carroll had an excerpt from her book published in New York Magazine on June 21st. And in this piece, she details how Donald Trump raped her. Now, her story is similar to the stories of the 15 other women who accused Donald Trump of sexual misconduct. You know, he was very forceful. He kissed them, you know, without getting their consent. But what she's going to describe here goes further than anyone else's story. She's going to describe how he raped her. When we walked into the lingerie department, there was nobody there, which was strange. It was in the evening, so... And on the counter were three really fancy boxes and a see-through bodysuit. He walked right to the bodysuit and snatched it up and said, go put this on. Now, that struck me as so funny because here I am, 52. I am not going to be put. My idea was, I said, no, you put it on. And he said, no, it looks like it fits you. I said, no, it goes with your eyes. So I am spinning a comedy scene in and my head. Of course, banter back and forth. I get it. But you see banter. how funny that would be to... Make him put yes. that on. Right. Yes, and you, by the way, used to be a comedy writer on Saturday Night Live. Right. You were engaging in this banter, as I think many of us would, because yes. you didn't know what violence was no, about I had... to unfold, and you could never have known that. How and would I know that? Of course. And Although so... I thought I was pretty stupid. Well, I mean, I understand that afterwards, in retrospect, you blame yourself. Many women in this situation do. However, you go into the dressing room, you think that he's gonna hold it up against him, yeah. and then it gets violent. Well, he, the minute he, he went like this, I preceded him into the dressing room. The minute he closed that door, I was banged up against the wall. He slammed you against the wall. Yeah, I hit my head really hard. Boom. And you point out and that he's a tall, big person, and six, he pinned three. you in some way. Well, I'm a tall person, too. I was 6'1 in my heels, and I was a competitive athlete, so, you know, when somebody shows you the thing is, it shocked me. It, for a moment, I was stunned, right? And then he tried to kiss me, which was, it was so hard. But so my reaction was to laugh, to knock off the erotic whatever he had going on. Because the man, when you laugh at him, he's like, Ugh. no, you know, he just went at it. And when you say went at it, you know, I mean. He pulled down my tights. And uh, it was a fight. It was, a, I want women to know that I did not stand there. I did not freeze. I was not paralyzed, which is a reaction that I could have had because it's so shocking. No, I fought. Uh, and um, it was over very quickly. It was against my will, 100%. And I ran away, out. And he mm -hmm. pinned you, I mean, just uh, without getting overly graphic, he pinned you against the wall. He, yeah, he held his sh shoulder he put, against He put it. his yeah. shoulder against you. And he is, you're right, He's. But you made that point. He's much bigger than you are. I mean, I, not just tall, I mean, in terms of yeah, he would, it, yeah. The, yeah. his massiveness. Um, and so he pinned you against the wall, he ripped off your tights, and... Not all the way off, just down. Down. He pulled down his pants. He No, just unzipped. He unzipped his pants. And this is beyond sexual. I mean, legally, he raped you. I don't use the word. I have difficulty with the word. I, I you think see it as a fight. I yes. just, I don't, you know. I understand, but you, you see it as a fight and you don't want to be seen as a victim, and I totally get that. Don't want to be seen as a victim because I over, quickly over, went past it. It was a very, very brief episode of my life. Very brief. I am not faced with sexual violence every single day like many women around the world. And so, yes, I'm very careful with that word. I understand. I, I like you, you, you will use it. You're an... Well, here's the situation. I understand that you don't want this to define you, of course, mm. who would? But I'm saying legally, it was rape. It's unambiguous. What you describe in the mm. book, mm. it was rape. And that actually goes further than the 15 women who came forward um, during the campaign who to say that they, they describe situations very similar to what you experienced. Him getting them into a room, him pinning them against a wall, him forcing a kiss on mm -hmm. them. But yours actually goes further in terms of being legally rape. That's what it was. Now, so we're clear here, Alison Camerota is correct. Legally speaking, the details 
absolutely constitute rape. And since that was on cable news, they couldn't get into all of the gruesome details. But in this piece, it's laid out pretty clearly, and it is downright disturbing. I'm going to read you a couple of paragraphs here. The next moment, still wearing correct business attire, shirt, tie, suit, jacket, overcoat, he opens the overcoat, unzips his pants, and forcing his fingers around my private area, thrusts his penis halfway, or completely, I'm not certain, inside me. It turns into a colossal struggle. The whole episode lasts no more than three minutes. I do not believe he ejaculates. So this is incredibly serious. These allegations are explosive. This is a scandal. And she addresses why she didn't come out sooner. And it's the same reason why someone wouldn't want to come out and accuse a very powerful person of this type of behavior. It's because she was worried she would receive death threats. She was worried that she would be attacked. And that's basically what Donald Trump did. Now, his initial response was to deny that he even knew her. He claims he never even met Carol, but the article literally contained a photograph of them together. So that's obviously on its face, completely absurd. But here's what he also said in response to these allegations. Quote, I'll say it with great respect. Number one, she's not my type. Number two, it never happened. It never happened, okay? It never happened, just like it never happened with the 15 other women. Who are you gonna believe? Are you gonna believe them, the accusers, or the guy who admitted on tape that he sexually assaults women. I grab him by the pussy. I don't even wait. He talked about how they let them do this because he's a celebrity. So, I mean, first of all, let's just address how disgusting that response is. He insults her. She's not my type. Second of all, is this a credible allegation? Yes. Regardless if you believe it or not, this is a serious story, and it should be taken seriously. But the problem is that it's not really being taken seriously. In fact, the media collectively yawned when this story was first announced, and many are pointing out that Joe Biden's creepy behavior actually received more coverage than this. And even though I do think that the Joe Biden story is an important story, this is obviously much more serious, much more explosive. So the problem is, this story demonstrates how we have become desensitized to these types of stories. And Trump's repulsiveness isn't really even shocking or surprising to people anymore, to the point where he could be credibly accused of rape and nobody even bats an eyelash. That's the state of American politics. Now, do I think that this story has any chance of hurting Donald Trump whatsoever? No, I don't. So the question is, if I don't think that this is going to hurt Donald Trump or affect him in any way, shape, or form. If we all know that this doesn't necessarily demonstrate the types of policies that he would implement, then why am I talking about this? What's the point? If everybody's desensitized, um, Republicans probably won't believe her, and everybody else doesn't really seem to care that much, why even talk about it? It's because we have to. We can't normalize this type of behavior. We can't normalize these types of allegations. If something like this comes out, we need to react very strongly to this because this is a serious, serious allegation. And no, it may not tell us about Trump's politics, but it tells us about the type of person he is. He's an amoral monster who disregards the harm he causes to other people. And that's not the type of person who should be anywhere near the Oval Office. So even if this isn't policy related and you can say, well, you know, this, we should be focusing on the real issues, the policy issues, because this doesn't affect me. It still is important because we need to know the type of person that the president is. He's a monster who was accused of raping a woman. She's the 16th accuser, the 16th, who accused someone who admitted he sexually assaults women of sexually assaulting her. So I can't not talk about this. I can't sweep this under the rug. I can't allow widespread desensitization to contribute to the normalization of this type of behavior. We have to fight this and we have to make it known that we care. These allegations are serious and we need to communicate to people that we care and we want to hear these stories. We want you to speak out if you have been sexually assaulted or raped.
Because that's the type of culture that we should be fostering as an egalitarian society. And it really is, it's honestly heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking that this was basically, you know, a non-story. And I get that there's a lot of other things, right? Trump almost bombed Iran. Uh, there's so much going on. People are struggling, but at the same time, this is still important and it does deserve attention. And the fact that it didn't get that attention, the fact that outlets like the New York Times had to come out and say, you know, we didn't really do a good job here in promoting the story. We put this in the book section, um, or maybe it was New York Magazine. One of them put this in the book section since this was an excerpt from her book. We can't let this happen. We can't normalize this type of behavior when it, when it happens. When somebody credibly accuses someone in power of rape, we have to react in a way that we, we would react to anyone else who isn't Donald Trump, where this isn't, you know, unsurprising. Treat each and every single one of these allegations serious because they're very serious.